do. I never know how long it takes for it to actually go live, so I stand here like a lemon. <laughs> I do the same. Give it like a, a few seconds to make sure I'm not talking and cut off the beginning. Uh, okay, I just got an advertisement pop up, so that means I'm pretty sure we're live. So, hello everybody, welcome to the live stream, a very special stream. Uh, I've got a, a guest with me today, uh, who is Marvel artist Todd Knox. Say hello, Todd. Hey, hey, hello everybody. Hey, Will, how's it going? I'm doing good, yeah. I'm sorry that we can't see your face. If you'd like to see Todd's <laughs> face, it's all over his social media as he cosplays as many characters at conventions. And he always shows his face at the beginning and end of his videos. So would you like to please introduce yourself and all your your accolades? <laughs> Thank you, Will. Yeah, let's see. Hey, uh, again, my name is Todd Nock. I'm an artist at Marvel Comics, much like uh, Will Robson here. And um, some of my past credits include um, all sorts of Spider-Man comics, uh, Friendly Neighborhood Spider-Man, Amazing Spider-Man, Spider-Man Clone Saga, Spider-Man and Silk, Spider-Fly Effect. Spider-Man and Deadpool, Deadpool Too Soon, Nightcrawler, Infinity War, Sleepwalker, Cosmic Ghost Rider, and most recently, I'm working on the Gwen Stacy solo series. So nothing special. You're a new artist. No, no, new yeah, to the game. Know, it, it, working on brand new characters, seeing if they'll stand the test of time. You know, we're, they're, they're, we're just uh, just throwing stuff at the wall and seeing what sticks. <laughs> Quite literally. Now this is, uh, uh, what's this say? I think your drawing camera is mirrored. It's mirrored. What's that? Don't know what that means. Uh, if you could tell me a bit more about that, please. I think I had the setup correct. Um, so this is special for me because um, when I was trying to break into comics, uh, Todd uh, became an influence of mine, uh, and I actually discovered you through YouTube, uh, not actual comics. And um, yeah, I just I always gravitate towards cartoony art styles, and yours yeah. really stuck out to me. And even to this day. When I do all of these, well, the only reason I've spent all this money on Copix is because of Todd Knox. So someone's just sent oh you a gosh. check. Yeah, I wish I'd known. I would have given you my affiliate number, affiliate <laughs> link. Yeah, well, no, no, we'll, we'll try to do that. <laughs> so today what we're going to do is we're each going to be drawing the same character. Uh, I'm doing on a sketch card. Todd's going to be doing on a post note. So please, in the chat, can you guys throw out some suggestions of who we should both draw? And this chat's usually a bit delayed, so I will... Uh, read some of the, the what people are saying do, do, do hello hello yep hello everybody hello hello todd exclamation point exclamation point exclamation point exclamation point exclamation point todd it was a pleasure to meet you at new york comic con this year and take pics together as peter b parker says green day guitar 44 all uh, right on and people ask yeah, it, how you're doing yeah i'm doing well and I'm, I'm curious how many people might have come over here from uh the announcement I made on my live stream I did on my channel earlier this morning, I invited everyone to come over here. So I'm curious if anyone was watched the, my live stream and has now joined us over here, if they want to give a shout out so we can see how many people are now discovering uh, uh, Wills. Oh, I see Tari. I know Tari's name. Yep, yep. We definitely got new people in the chat. So suggestions we have so far are Superman, Gambit, Blade, Spider-Man Noir, Ninja Turtles, Kingpin, and Nova. So, any of those grabbing you at all? Ah, they're, they're, those are all great. Ah, I, I, um, man. I see the creeper just came in. Yeah, Golly. The question, Daredevil. Uh, are any of these, uh, striking a chord with you, Will? Well, I just drew Kingpin on my last one, so I'm gonna okay. have to pass that one. Um, right. But, um, let's see here. Do, 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 do what would suit the blue let's go with... I got, oh i've got other colors here too I, I i just had this up as a test to make sure i was in the, in the frame so i got like like 17 different colors here so we don't have to restrict it just to blue oh well no worries how about let's 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 go with uh superman that was the first suggestion so i think they get the first choice i think that makes it fair right Fair enough. And I have all the right colors for Superman in front of me, <laughs> so that, that helps as well. So we're going to go for Superman. Now, I use a Pilot Color Eno 0 0.7 pencil. I find uh, it's like working on the computer where the opacity is lowered, and I really like it. Uh, one thing I, uh, I will say that's great about Todd Knox's YouTube channel is he is very thorough about what he's using and why he's using it. And for any aspiring artist or professional artist like myself, 
that knowledge is just beyond useful. Yeah, it's a question I get all the time. So I try to do my best to always call out the tools I'm using so then I don't have to reply to the uh, comment saying, what, what was the name of that pencil you used? No, I totally, I totally get it. But it's great for me because I'll sit and, and watch a video, even if I'm like laying in the bath or something and watching the video. And you'll be like, <laughs> I'll be like, oh, are you using a B24 for the blue hair? And I'm, I get my notepad off. I'm like, right, I need to buy a B24. <laughs> and I'm like, all right, the B24, that's the medium tone. And this is the, this. Is, so yeah, I'm a proper, yeah, I'm a proper studier. Right on. So do you want to talk a bit, um, sort of about your art influences? Yeah, absolutely. And also uh, if anybody has see. any questions in the chat, feel free to ask. This is a, this is a big Q and A while we do it. Totally. Totally. Yes. Um, so let's see. Um, I started reading comic books as a, as a junior high uh, kid, I uh, started reading in eighth grade. So I was uh, 13 years old in 1984. Um, I wasn't even so born start... yet. <laughs> when were you born, if you don't mind me asking? 1990. I'll be 30 next week. Ni I, no, this week. This uh, Friday. Oh, this Friday. That's right. Yeah. Oh, congratulations <laughs> for making it 30 years that's, in. With the question mark, I think that's the appropriate response. Congratulations, question mark. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's like, oh, that's, that's, that seemed kind of an odd sentence there. Uh, but happy birthday. Let me be the first to wish you happy oh, birthday you this week. Um, so uh, started uh, reading comics in the 1980s, and I love the X-Men. So some of my biggest influences were the 80s X-Men artists. So Arthur Adams was my probably my biggest influence, because I gravitate towards those kind of cartoony meets realistic sort of styles. Same him. So... Um, so Arthur Adams, Rick Leonardi, Walter Simonson, Alan Davis, Mark Silvestri, those were some of my very first influences. Well, I can definitely understand the, um, the R. Adams uh, influence. I think that's one of the reasons why I gravitated towards your stuff as well, because I saw that in there. Have you ever uh, met Art? I'm sure you have. The I have, yes, have. yes. Yes. Um, I, I, uh, it's so wild to... Uh, you know, you, 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 you enjoy a person's work. You know, we, we, I think all of us who want to work in the industry, we look at our favorite comic book artists. We, they influence us and inspire us and um, and, and, and really kind of help shape our, our the beginnings of our style as we learn more and we start to move in the directions of our own unique style. And then to actually get to meet them, seeing them at conventions, go to dinner and, and then become friends with them. Like uh, I've gone out to dinner with Chris Claremont Wow. So many times because he and I did the Nightcrawler series together. So I've worked with him. I've become friends with him. And if someone told 13-year-old Todd that someday <laughs> you're going to meet, work with, and befriend the writer of, you know, one of your favorite writers in comics, I don't know if I would have believed it. It was It's it's so it's so bizarre to um, to have that experience here in this industry and, and, and to become uh, friends with the people whose work you admire and, and have learned so much from. Yeah, I know it is crazy. I I met um, I met Art at a London convention five years ago, and I he was gracious enough to give me a portfolio review at the time. Oh wow! And it really really helped me with uh, a lot of stuff. And I obviously bought because at that time I was a hungry young artist, so I would go up to everybody and anybody for advice, and I'm, I would just say, please just tear me apart. What's what is the worst thing about my art? what what do i need to improve on and he was really really good with it and that was um, great yeah so that was uh that was definitely a cool experience yeah yeah i i, I remember when i was uh first started going to comic book conventions it was like a year before you were even born <laughs> i was fresh out of high school and uh didn't know what to even put in a portfolio i just had a bunch of superhero drawings in my portfolio and just walked up to whoever was at a at a, a at a table at these uh, small I, I grew up in uh, near Dallas Texas uh, I'm a native Texan um, and so uh, you know I go to these Dallas comic book conventions and anybody I could show my portfolio to any professional artist writer editor especially editors you know I, I just wanted as many people to see my art and critique my art so I knew what to fix because in the late 80s early 90s there was no public internet yet so mm -hmm. i had no other resource other than going and meeting people face to face because in my tiny texas town i grew up in for years we didn't even have a comic book shop you know there was there i, I went to such a small high school that there was 
I was the only really only comic book kid in my class. Really, no one, no one else read. Out. No one else read comics. Not, not not that many. Not until like my junior senior year. Uh, one of my best friends he started reading comics because he saw how much fun I was having and how and comics were really starting to take off with. Um, this was around the time of the Inferno series and Jim Lee and Rob Liefeld and Todd McFarlane were on the cusp of making their big debuts at Marvel. So c comics were starting to get really big at that point. So he started collecting. So I at least had one buddy and then another kid uh, came to school and he was he was a comic book reader. So the three of us were like the only comic book kids and or, you know, readers in my in my class. So. Uh, so, yeah, I, I felt re really alone at that time, but I kind of didn't mind so much because it gave me time to just focus on my work but it would have been nice to have someone to geek out with uh in those early stages but uh but i was definitely fr glad to have my friends chris and trey uh show up uh, later in my teen life to um to geek out with in fact it was chris's idea to go to the first our first dallas comic book convention and uh, i don't know if i would have thought to make that trek out to dallas to do that at age 18 uh so i really attribute uh my friend chris to have the the gumption and the wherewithal to Hey, let's go check out a comic book convention. <laughs> and I'm sure that that comic convention looks completely different to what conventions are now today. It was one of those hotel ballroom comic right. book conventions. So it wasn't even in a convention center uh, yet. It, the, they'd move, start, it, it, the convention would start to get so big because of the industry, you know, selling, you know, enormous numbers of Spider-Man and X-Men comics with, you know, Rob Liefeld and, uh, Todd McFarlane and Jim Lee. So it, the, the comics conventions got bigger as the industry got bigger, at least there in Dallas. So, uh, so that was pretty wild to go from hotel ballrooms to the Dallas convention center. Now it's funny you were talking about how the conventions were your only outlet um, to get critiques, but funnily enough for me, yeah. when I was on the scene uh, sharing my portfolio, it wasn't online that I went to. It was conventions. Like that's where. Oh, awesome. That's how I actually broke into Marvel as well when they came over. Uh, in 2016, uh, yeah, early 2016. Uh-huh. Um, and then also, I, that's how I met IDW and all these other companies. Then, yeah, I, I can never really... I was terrible at getting people's email, and I also just didn't feel comfortable doing blind emails. Yeah, And I was, yeah. I was much happier just to be like, look, I'll just submit my portfolio. You like it or you don't. <laughs> and yeah. uh, give me feedback. So I still say today, if you want to break into comics, like a lot of people, I think I'm a rarity of, of a modern day person that has broken the comics the same way people did it in the 1980s, really. Yeah. Um, now, when you had, say you submitted your portfolio, was that the kind of the audition process where I know at, like at the big conventions like Marvel or DC will have like this place where you drop off your samples photocopies of your samples then you come back the next day to see on the call sheet if you're invited back to actually meet with an editor if they liked what they saw and they wanted to actually talk with you was it that kind of critique pretty much exactly that it was uh okay. cb sabolsky and heather antos were over at a london convention yeah uh, and um they it was hand in your portfolio and i, I purpose and it was i purposely got there early because i thought god there's gonna be so many people like rushing to hand in portfolios Right. Uh, so the moment the doors opened, I like ran past everybody and I was <laughs> hoofing it and I got there and I was like, am I too late? They're like, you are literally the first person. I think you're the first person uh -huh. in the convention hall. So I think you're fine. Oh, that's crazy. That's wild. And I put my phone number on every single page everywhere. And yep. like, I made sure I was always fully charged and everything like that. Cause I was, I was ready. And, um, that's it was, great. it was quite an interesting time because there was about, uh, 10 or 15 other artists like me who started, hanging around uh, the area where they were going to be reviewing portfolios because uh -huh. they, they did a panel and then they said, right, we're going to go review portfolios. And I was able, and they went behind the curtain, but I was able to position myself where I could see behind the curtain, but I stood, uh -huh. I stood on the opposite side of the convention hall as not to look suspicious. So uh -huh. I was leaning against a wall and, uh, and then all the, all these other artists caught on and I was, there was just two bins and they were putting some into one bin and some into another. So I was like, oh my God. Uh -huh. And I saw mine and it went into one bin. I was like, I hope that's the promise bin. And, right. then, and then suddenly all these different artists, they started getting phone calls. Like they were all being called up. I don't know, like to heaven or something like that. Like, uh -huh. like hooray. <laughs> like I've, I've been, you know, I'm off. And I remember um, it was down to me and a couple other people. And I didn't get the call. And I was really like, ah, I think this is, this is it for me. I, I guess, um, 
I guess I'll have to keep trying, etc. And then I started having that idea in my head because at that point I'd been trying to break in for a good uh, four years, studying all uh-huh. day, every single day, you know, really committed yeah. to it. And I was at the point where I was like, this is pretty much it because Marvel doesn't really come regularly. So if this doesn't right. happen, then I'm going to have to start considering your options. And then luckily yeah. I received a phone call and I, I had a, they said, you have a meeting with CB Sobolski this afternoon. Um, I panicked. I went to drink a beer immediately. <laughs> uh, <laughs> at that point I had quit smoking. I picked it up again for a day because I was so nervous. And, oh my um, gosh. I had the the review and it went fantastically and he was really humble and, and nice and told me everything he liked about my art, everything he didn't like. And then uh, he said, this is, um, I'm going to get you in contact with Ricky, who at the time was the, the talent sort yeah. of coordinator. Yeah, Ricky's a great guy. Yeah, yeah. I love Ricky. And, um, and then about, I got lucky. I did some sample pages immediately. And when I got the samples, I, I made sure that I did them instantly so, yeah. that, so that they knew that I was fast. Because that was one thing uh-huh. I, I wanted to make sure that it, they knew that I was, you know, serious about the job. Right. And um, about, I think uh, after that, that was March. Uh, a month later, I just so happened to get an email, um, and they desperately needed an artist to hop in on Star Lords to wrap up the series. Uh huh. I remember that issue, or those, those a couple of issues you did, right? I just did one issue of Star Lord. Um, one. Okay. And it was only 15 pages because the, the other artist was leaving off to another book. And then I luckily uh-huh. um, got in touch with Tom Brevo and he said, hey, I'm going to do a Great Lakes Avengers book. I'm going to take a gamble on you. Don't let me down. And I don't think I did. And I've been working <laughs> ever since. So. Oh, that's awesome. Let me go into the chat now to see what I've missed here. I, mean, I don't know why I'm talking about myself when I have a guest on here. That's, that's ridiculous. <laughs> Uh, let's see here. Uh, since you both have worked on Spider People books, if you could cameo in Spider Verse Two, what would you want your role to be? Uh, a safe citizen that does not get injured. That's my answer. <laughs> uh, I would probably want to be uh, Peter B. Parker from a different reality. Well, I mean, every, I know a lot of people say that you just pretty much look like uh, the Spider Man that's in the Spider Verse. When that first Spider-Verse trailer came out, I hadn't seen it yet. And as soon as it came out, you know, people were all excited about the movie. And I started getting this flood of comments and DMs saying, you look like Peter Parker in Into the Spider-Verse. And I hadn't seen the trailer yet, so I didn't know what Peter B. Parker looked like yet. So I'm like, my thought was, uh, no, I have a long face. Peter Parker, historically, traditionally, does not have a long face. You know, <laughs> my face is more like a Reed Richards or a Doctor Strange. No, no, you you guys are wrong. You're you're You're... You're, you're crazy. And then I go and I look up the trailer and I'm watching it as like, holy moly, he's got a long face. He's got this kind of weird shaped kind of bend in his nose like I do. And my wife is like, somebody, somebody based this this Peter Parker after you. I she is so. like 95 percent sure that somebody uh, on the design team uh, patterned it after me. So and he's got the salt and pepper kind of a little bit of the gray in the hair. So it's like, oh, dang. So I, I, I just fully embraced it, put together the cosplay and and just ran with it and it's been so much fun it's like uh definitely been a, a badge of honor to uh look so, so similar to um uh peter b parker it's it's been a lot of fun to to actually cosplay as the character and take f- photos with all sorts of spider gwens and miles moraleses and uh even a few spider hams so uh, it, it's 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 uh i fully embrace the peter b parker lifestyle my my dad bod uh proves it <laughs> So that's the thing. I mean, you're uh, not many. I don't, you don't see many artists sort of getting into the spirit of a comic convention and dressing up. And what what spurred you on to uh, start doing that? You know, I I always loved to dress up in costumes as a kid. I remember I, there are photos of me in like a little vinyl Superman costume and stuff like that. And and you know, dressing up as my favorite D and D or whatever D and D character I was making up in junior high. And then just kind of fell away from that. And then when cosplay kicked in, and it was this kind of like this chance to kind of express your fandom no matter your age gender whatever character you like and i thought well i can't do that i'm a professional comic book artist i have to maintain an air of professionalism yeah. you, i can't just yeah, start because, dressing I mean, up as if you want to go behind the curtain most comic book artists at a convention are the opposite of professional when they're there 
<laughs> yeah. So, uh, so I, I had, uh, I went to this Doctor Who event, uh, just purely as a fan, and it was like this kind of uh, murder mystery uh, Doctor Who Who themed dinner. So I, I got the tenth Doctor suit to to dress up as the tenth Doctor, and my wife was Rose Tyler, and um, and uh, I actually there was uh. So I had the suit, but I was still too shy to wear it at a convention. I thought, I can't really do this. No one would take me seriously. And then um, I have to say, I was inspired by comic book writer Sam Humphreys. Oh, yeah. At the I know Sam. Wonder, yeah, WonderCon uh, that year. I think it was 2015, uh, maybe 2016. He showed up cosplaying as Prince. Oh, that's great. The, the, the rock star Prince. And I'm like, Sam, you look, one, you look awesome. Two, it's like, you, you've you've broken the wall between pro and cosplay, and I am going to run through this wall with you. I, I'm <laughs> I'm going to do it. I had done casual cosplays. You know, I just throw on a Cyclops visor. Now I'm Scott Summers from from the X Men. Yeah, you do have you a know, very Scott Summers look. So uh, so I could I could do I was doing that. So I, I wasn't it was like the most casual of cosplays. So I didn't have to commit to it. You know, commit to wearing you know, a, a full costume. So then once I did started, so I started doing Dr. Who at, at, at conventions and, and it was a lot of fun and it was kind of, kind of my entry into doing full cosplay. Cause still I'm wearing a suit and sneakers. It's like, it's still people who didn't know Dr. Who thought I was just dressed up for the day. They go, Oh, are you on a panel or something? Cause you're all looking so spiffy. I was like, no, I'm, I'm the 10th doctor. See, here's my sonic <laughs> screwdriver and everything. So, and then from there, it just started to snowball. I just started having fun. It's like, because I'm still a geek and I'm a fan at heart. And so I want to have fun at the conventions as well because I've always enjoyed taking photos with cosplayers. But I didn't, it was kind of boring just being a normal person standing next to Wolverine or Psylocke yeah. or uh, whatever favorite, you know, character comes walking by. You know, oh, here's she -Ra. Hey, can we get a photo together? So that's why I started doing casual cosplay. And then I just jumped into full cosplay and... And Peter B. Parker was my first time to go wearing uh, like spandex, the kind of the the Zentai suit sort of uh, level of of cosplay. Fortunately, I get to wear those sweatpants over it, so I don't have to be fully um, spandex, which is a, a saving grace. <laughs> well, why no? That's to come. Why not? <laughs> exactly. Once I get a little more in shape here, I got to lose a little bit more of this dad bod gut before I really want to go that route. I, uh, I, I'm looking to do the out of shape heroes, and in the early 1990s. Blue Beetle of Justice League really let himself go, and he had a bit of a gut. So I'm thinking I could probably pull off an early 1990s Justice League Blue Beetle. That's definitely been a character I've considered. <laughs> well, I could definitely do um, uh, Star Lord when he finally eats too many of those sandwiches. So that would be my <laughs> one. Uh, we'll have to team up and do a cross company uh, 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 team up photo shoot. Yeah, Star Lord and Blue Beetle. So I mean, you're not uh, you're, you're not an exclusive to Marvel, are you? Uh, no, I, I'm freelance. So I, I it's it's um, you know, there's you don't have the job security of, you know, uh, guaranteed work every month, but you do have the freedom to work for other companies. So I've worked at Marvel and DC simultaneously. Most recently, I worked for Marvel or, doing the Spidey Schools Out series while doing the Mystery Science Theater comic book series for Dark Horse. Yeah, at the same big, time, which so. was a big sort of passion project for you, wasn't it? I am a huge Mystery Science Theater fan. I have every episode either on VHS. Well, I have every episode on VHS still. I have many of the episodes on, on DVD and uh, quite a few of them on digital. I love the show. And to be able to draw the comic book based on one of my all-time favorite shows uh, was a fanboy dream come true, big time. That's great. And you start. I mean, uh, I'm, if if I recall correctly, you you started with uh, Rob Liefeld's image, isn't that correct? That was my first full big big time break. That was when I started working in comics full time. I got my first paid published work uh, about a year and a half prior to that, while I was still in art school at the Dallas Comic Book Conventions, uh, showing my portfolio. Back when I was trying to break in, you just walked up to the publisher table and asked if there was an editor available to look at your portfolio. There was no drop it off, come back to see if you made the call list or get the phone call yeah. sort of thing. It's just, you just stood in line and, and, and just walked up to an editor. So um, so there was this one editor, she, she'd come to the Dallas conventions all the time because she was... Uh, a native Texan, so she'd come out uh, so she could see her family. Uh, and her name was Renee Witterstatter. She was editor of She-Hulk uh, back in the late 80s, early 90s. And she also edited Marvel's humor comic book called What The. 
And, um, and I was really into what the, cause my style was mega cartoony at that time. And, uh, so after like the fourth time she saw my portfolio, uh, cause they would do these conventions like every four months. So about mm-hmm. after a year of seeing my portfolio, she said, she's, I guess she saw enough progression in my work. She said, I'll let you do, uh, a, a one-page gag for what the just send me some ideas and that became wow, so you, uh, you must have been over the moon when you had that i was flipping out i was still in art school i still had an, uh three or four more months before i graduate so uh got to be a part of my uh, graduation portfolio and all my uh, classmates were so excited for me because i was the only one who was wanting to be a comic book artist uh because everyone else was studying to be a commercial artist or a uh, an art director things like that graphic designers which i was just at art school just to learn all the other basics of art, like life drawing and design skills and applying what I learned there to comics because my school did not teach a, a thing about comics. They actually mm-hmm. discouraged people from pursuing a career in comics because they terrible. just didn't understand. You, I, teachers do not discourage anybody from anything, really. Yeah, well, you know, they just didn't understand what comics were at the time and uh, they just thought that people who wanted to draw comics were just kind of... Mo- most of the instructors there said, you know, they said they would just kind of just rail on me saying, you don't want to do... You don't really want to pursue a serious uh, career in art. You just want to draw superheroes. And it's like, no, I want to be a storyteller. It's like yeah, exactly. comic books are out there. People are buying them. It's a viable career. And uh, I understand stand that you're not teaching this stuff. I'm not asking you to teach me about comics. Teach me everything else. I will apply this to comics. I will do that on my own time. Don't you worry about me. You just <laughs> you know, help me with my life drawing skills. Teach me about design. Teach me color theory. And I will utilize that as needed. Um, Halfway through my career, the 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 or halfway through my um, schooling, the the head of the department uh, saw my 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 work and she said, you know, we don't we really discourage people from pursuing a career in comics because most people who want to do this they don't understand what it takes to be a comic book artist. They right. just think it's drawing a cool picture of Spider Man or Batman. But we, she goes, but I understand. I see that you understand that it is you know that it's about telling stories and and the panel to panel sequential art that you understand what comics is as an art form so you're going to be the second second exception we've made at the school and let you graduate with a comic book themed portfolio so it really made my second year at this two-year program far better than the first year because i wasn't having to defend my career choice um so uh so it's so exciting to get that first first one and all my instructors saying it's like whoa todd's got his first paid published work and it's for Marvel and this is kind of crazy but it would still be another year and a half before I would work in comics full time I, I I went to my first New York comic book convention uh, at the Jacob Javits Convention Center yeah. it was a snowy January day my dad and I went out and it was great to have my dad there because he went with me he went into the convention and he got to see firsthand he was always supportive of my choice of career in comics he's like if that's what you want to do take a shot at your dreams because if it doesn't work out you can course correct and find a new dream if it doesn't work out and you'll know if it's not going to work out he says but take a shot you know while you're young just go for it so he's very supportive so for him to come to a convention and see what it took the competition of you know showing your portfolio and all the other young artists trying to get discovered and this was like 1993 when we did this when i went to my first uh, new york convention and that's where i met fabian nicieza and he liked my art and I started doing tryouts with him. He was grooming me to be a Marvel artist. But at that same time, Image Comics had started and Rob Liefeld had discovered my work and he offered me a job. And mm. I grew up a big Rob Liefeld New Mutants fan. So I was very excited to move to California and work in his studio. So I kind of bailed on Marvel at that time and ran with Rob uh, as uh, the start to my full-time career. And moving to California to work in his studio uh, was was such a wild time because com- uh, image was only like two years old and just doing gangbusters it was like they the comics were the hot comics yeah it must have been early 90s it must have been i mean obviously you didn't know at the time but to be in one of the image studios at the at the very beginning uh that's 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 crazy i'm sure there's many of uh memories and stories of that because that's <laughs> that's yeah and i'm sure some you probably can't share as well because i've heard stories <laughs> <laughs> yeah it, it, it was definitely a wild time and what was fun was that rob had this his studio because this is when i came in at, in year two so he is art is already everything was big time 
So he had his studio and Image Comics main offices in this uh, tower next to Angels Baseball Stadium there in Anaheim, California. Oh, really? And so, yeah, so we're on the 10th floor and our studio overlooks the baseball stadium. Oh, wow. And so it's like, whoa. And, and in this office building, you have all these, you know, you have like 30 of us, you know, com young comic book creators, writers, artists, colorists. And uh, we're all wearing our rock and roll or superhero T-shirts and shorts and caps and Extreme Studio uh, Tour leather jackets. And you're, all, and, you're really uh, young as well, aren't you? Yeah, we're all in, like, most of us are in our mid, early to mid, late, like Rob was one of the older ones at like age 26 or 27. Wow. All of us are, are like younger. I think I'm like four years younger than Rob. So he was probably about 27, 28. I was 23 when I broke in there. And um, uh, so we're all young and we're getting on these elevators with all these bankers and lawyers and people all dressed up in suits, real straight laced looking people. And we'd always get the weirdest looks when we get on the elevator and, you know, they're getting off at floor three, four, five, six. And we're like, See, we're heading up to the, you know one of the top floors. We're heading up to floor ten. Have a great day. But we just get the weirdest looks because you know it's like, what are these kids doing in this, you know, fancy office building? That's great. And did you see? I remember. Um, the, uh, I've watched a few documentaries on that time at, at Image. And was there a lot of people that came in and left immediately the moment they got their sort of first paycheck? I know I heard the story with Tom McFarlane where he'd hire some people. And they get they'd be on a book, and for some reason get you know the sales would be really good, and then, and then they just leave after one book. They're like, "Thank you, I've made my money. Oh, Goodbye." Wow. Almost like the the mafia or something like that. Right. Uh, I I was not aware of that. Um. At uh, because uh, I think uh Rob is or not no, Rob. Uh, Todd McFarlane is in uh Arizona. Yeah, he was. Yeah. So uh, most of the studios, like I know Jim Lee's studio was down in San Diego, which was about an hour and a half south of us. Um, Eric Larson, his studio is up in uh, Central California near uh, San Francisco, I believe, and near Oakland. And then uh, Mark Silvestri was in L.A., which would be an hour to two hours north of where uh, we were in, in Orange County. We were right next to Disneyland. And, um, and then uh, uh, Jim Valentino, his studio is down closer towards uh, Jim Lee's, and Will Spertasio was down there near San Diego. So we were the only studio there in, in Anaheim, California. So I didn't really know... If, any of the other stories at the other studios so much. Uh, by the time I'd come in, uh, I, I Rob was, you know, he, he, he paid me a very generous page rate. I, like, I was like shocked. It's like, you're going to pay me this. And I'm like brand new. I was like, great. I'm going to pay off my school loans within a year. Wow. Um, um, so uh, I was just, when I came in, I was just all about, let's do some comics. I, 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 I didn't really get caught up in any of the, the the uh insanity please, the, the dr <laughs> drama or the insanity i mean we had some wild crazy things as wild and crazy things you know you do wild and crazy things as a, a kid in your 20s yeah uh that's going to happen anyway just uh, you know discovering life and but um but you know we had it was, a, it was a most of us were guys there weren't a lot of uh women working in the comics yet um at least in the art art section that, that we had some female writers like joe duffy and uh tom and mary Beerbaum. But um, but in the studio, a vast majority of us were guys. So it's just like a big, a big like fraternity uh, of you know just being goofy and, and setting up Hot Wheels tracks in the studio and just <laughs> just playing. And uh, but as far as like uh, like royalties and stuff, the industry was starting to kind of reach the top of the roller coaster and was about to head down. Yeah. So yeah, especially because you said this is 1993 at the time. Uh, it was 94 when Rob discovered me. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. So you're the you're, beginning of 94. So you pretty much walked through the doors near the almost, I guess, quote, the without thinking of a better word, the collapse, essentially, of the business yeah, in the, the 90s. The, the bubble was just about to burst. So the royalty checks had kind of dried up. So I was hearing rumor of, of these enormous royalty checks guys were making at the very, very beginning days of Image when, you know, Think what young blood sold like 2.5 million copies wow. and wildcats and spawn sold i think was the high spawn was the highest selling image first issue and those had kind of tapered off uh, quite a bit so um but i was very thankful to you know be working in the industry and have a very very uh, generous and healthy page rate so i just sat down and i started drawing comics and uh and i was just having the, the time of my life it's like oh my gosh this is it i'm doing it so when did, so, I mean, it must have been, 
How close was that to the time of Heroes Reborn? Do you remember? Uh, yeah, I remember when Rob got the, like, the, he made the announcement. He's like, hey, Marvel is, ha you know, I'm doing the Heroes Reborn, Captain America, and, and uh, Avengers uh, comics for, for Marvel's Hero uh, Heroes Reborn. And uh, that was kind of towards the end of the Marvel, or the Extreme Studios time. Like, I think Extreme would close its doors, like, uh, they closed their doors. So I was, uh, you know, they started doing waves of furloughs for their different artists. Right. Uh, through through the 1997 i was like one of the last waves uh before uh when rob shut the doors on extreme and then that led me to working at dc comics uh straight from there but um but uh so i remember seeing the beginning actually i did some layout work on that first issue of avengers uncredited layouts oh, that yeah. i had done for rob uh so I, I did have a hand in that first issue That's fun. um uh, yeah, which which was pretty wild that Rob asked me. He goes, "Hey Todd, I want you to do some layouts for me," and uh, and so he worked off of my layouts, which was uh, a real honor. Well, you were uh, you were known as as like one of the faster guys, right? Because didn't you didn't you miss get the misinformation that you needed to be able to draw <laughs> three pages a day or something ridiculous? Oh my gosh, yeah. So uh, you 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 uh, heard that story apparently. Yes, uh, when I at my very first Dallas convention there, that fall of 1989, uh, November of '89. I was a sponge. Any information yep. I could get, I relished whatever I could get. I was asking questions, and I was doing a lot of eavesdropping on professional conversations, or what I thought might have been professional conversations. Just kind of, you know, like you were doing, standing over by that one wall. Yep. I just kind of be, oh, I'm going to stand at this table and look through this long box, but I'm totally listening in on this conversation because I think these two people might work for a company. And, um, and so I had overheard a person say, John Byrne says the Marvel rule is two pages of art a day. Oh, my God. Well, like, maybe for oh. John Byrne. <laughs> oh, I know. With him doing, like, two or three books a month, you know. Uh, what was it? Uh, he was doing Iron Man, Namor, and uh, She-Hulk at one time. Oh, God. Uh, something like that. So, yeah. <laughs> he was definitely able to, to crank out the material in a amazing way. So, uh, so I just took it as gospel. It's like, well, if that's what John Byrne says, then that's what I need to aspire to. So I taught myself how to get two pages of artwork done a day. So when I got hired by Rob and ended up in his studio, he didn't know I could do two pages a day. So I'm in there and I'm like, you know, getting a book done, you know, way ahead of schedule. And he's yeah. like, oh, oh my gosh, this kid's a machine. He's like, the book's so going to be done next week. Oh my God. <laughs> so if a book was late, it goes like, give it to Todd. That's funny. But that's also dangerous because then you get pigeonholed as, as, the, as that guy, right? Yeah, yeah. Fortunately, I mean, uh, once, uh, you know, I moved on from Extreme and ended up over at DC, it was kind of like a kind of a restart there. Even though my editor knew that I could get a book done on time, uh, I wasn't having to work quite as the machine because, you know, I was still here in California and DC was still in, uh, in Manhattan, New York City. Right. So uh, all my uh, experiences with my editors were mostly through telephone calls. Right, well, as opposed to being in studio. I'm going to I'm gonna go to the chat because I've just been the one answer, asking questions here. So let's have a little see. Who are we drawing? We're drawing Superman. Uh, Will, who would you cosplay as at a convention? As I said, I'd be the Star Lord who's eaten too many sandwiches. Uh, since I asked Will this, Todd, who would your Fantastic Four team be? No original four team members. Okay. Oh, interesting. Wow. So no originals. That means Ben, Sue, Johnny, and Reed are off the table. Yeah, they're all lost in space somewhere. All lost in space, uh, as they are wont to do. Uh, let's see. Um, well, I would definitely probably pick some of the other characters that have been in the Fantastic Four. One of my all-time favorites, She-Hulk, mm -hmm. would have to be on my Fantastic Four. Um, I'd probably put Spider-Man on my Fantastic Four. He has been a Fantastic Four member at one at uh, several points. Yeah, huge uh, So I pick too. at least. Yeah, yeah. and uh, let's see. Um, if I could, huh, I want to kind of get creative and pick someone who's never been a Fantastic Four member or even really associated with Fantastic Four all that much. So if I had the strength with She-Hulk and then the 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 brains and agility and, and strength of Spider-Man, pretty well covered on strength. Uh, I'd probably want to put like uh, somebody like. Uh, Oh man, I want to get weird with it. So you know what? I'm I'm gonna pick some of my favorite characters, and just get really weird with that. So I'm gonna say Warlock from the New Mutants. Nice. I'm gonna put him on my on my team there. And uh, uh, who else would I put? Uh, gosh, I'm just trying to think of other characters that. What would I? 
Hmm. You know what? I'm going to say... <laughs> oh, man, it's so hard to pick four. Uh, I'm going to say Dagger from Cloak and Dagger. Wow. Spidey, Dagger, Warlock, and because uh, Dagger will give us some little energy projection there, some long-distance attack. So uh, Sp uh, Spidey, She-Hulk, Dagger, and Warlock. There you go. That took a Would lot of thinking. My... It, it did. I was not expecting a question like that, but that's definitely a fun one. Fun, fun question. Who Who is your Fantastic Four, Will? Oh, God, I answered it last time. I can't remember. Oh, you can't remember? Okay. <laughs> I did it because sometimes my brother joins on the stream who's a big comic book fan. And, oh, right on. And um, we put a team together. I know Spider-Man was on the team. I think Scarlet Witch was on the team as well. Nice. Uh, I can't remember uh, the specifics. Sure. That's a good start. That's a great start. So uh, you went to DC, and what was it you doing, uh, Robin or something like that? Teen uh, Titans? I started. <laughs> I got my start with um, the Legion of Superhero Office. Right. I'd sent in some Legion of Superhero samples. When I had to start, when Rob shut the doors to Extreme Studios, I kind of had to start over from breaking in, kind of almost at square one. Because uh, I had no contacts at Marvel or DC, mm -hmm. so um, so I started to to just kind of cold mail my samples in uh, to the editors and submission editors. And this was and, a little snail um, mail, right? Mike, this was snail mail of the mid 1990s. This was 1997 when I started this. Now that's uh, frightening. I mean, I get frightened. I, well, I was frightened when I used to send emails and being like, "Oh, when are they getting back to me?" But sending in, in, in yeah. the snail mail, and that's I assume that's how you handed in pages yep. at that time as well right uh yeah we would fedex pages to the uh either to to dc or to, straight to the inker fortunately my inker on young justice i could just drive them over to his house because oh that's uh, good because god forbid you'd lose uh something in the post exactly uh so um uh so yeah so i just started snail mailing and uh to marvel and dc trying to break in at now the big two but at least now i had a resume of two and a half years of work uh, with Rob, so I yeah. had a lot of comics, you know, under my belt for all the work I did with him, which kind of helped me out there. And uh, Mike Carlin, who was one of the, I think he was the editor in chief of DC at the time, uh, he really liked my work, and he would, rep I'd send a self-addressed stamped envelope every time I'd mail in a submission packet to any editor, and I would get like this. Um, he would take the time to write me a handwritten note. I think I still have them somewhere, saying, "Dig your work. Don't have anything for you yet, but stay patient." <laughs> so that's and on so, the... so editors have not changed since the 1990s. That's good to hear. <laughs> not, not, uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. So, uh, so that was just kind of the the encouragement that kept me holding on for those like uh, seven, eight months until uh, I sent in some samples uh, with the Legion of Superheroes and Impulse, and um, and that that kind of put me over the top. Mike uh, goes into the Legion office, or the Legion editor calls me. He says, yeah, Mike Carlin came into my office. He goes, dropped your samples on, on my desk and said, give this kid some work. So uh, nice. you want to draw some Legion? I'm like, uh, absolutely, I do. That's awesome. And all the, all the while, I did not realize I was being considered as one of five artists they were looking at for the Young Justice series. Wow. Now, so that was DC's, something that was... DC's a uh, company I've, I've yet to work with yet, but I, I really, uh -huh. really, really want to. I love DC Comics. and um, Oh, yeah. It's weird because... So I've, I've done variants at many other different companies. Yeah. Uh, but just interiors professionally has been uh, Marvel, so... I'm getting that yeah. itch essentially. I'm getting that, <laughs> that itch to, to branch out. Is there a, is there a title at DC that or a character that you would hope to get a chance to to draw? Anything in the Bat Universe? I'd love to do um, nice. Robin, Nightwing, um, anything like that, and uh, Superman uh -huh. as well. Oh, uh, cool! Yeah, I've seen your Supermans. They're fantastic. Thank you. Let's see here, oh. uh, Blue Marvel would be my first FF pick. Followed by Spectrum, Ant Man, and Miss Marvel. That's a good team. Wow, yeah, that's good. Question What original characters do you have in the draw that's never seen publication? Oh, go ahead. Ah. Oh. Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, I, I've created a lot of characters from my Wild Guard series, my creator owned series that got me noticed by Rob and from my college mini comics, and then I later did as a series at uh, Image Comics. I've done 12 issues of that series. Need to revisit those characters. I do have a new character called uh, Jack O'Lantern, which he has oh, a yeah, comic yeah, strip. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're funnies, right? Yeah, he's more of a comedic comic strip on my Instagram. He has his own Instagram account. I need to get some more of those strips done. 
As far as new characters, no character that I'm willing to reveal just yet. But I have this right. one new character. I have a name for this character that I'm very excited about. I just need to get this character designed and see where I can work this character into uh, a story All of right. my own creation. So, great question, but I, I, I'm too afraid to let that name out just yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, for me, I'm actually in the process of creating several creator-owned books that I'm in the process of mid-pitching or still drawing. So, yes, I also cannot <laughs> cannot say anything. Um, but uh, I am, I will say that I am in the process of making a book which is all about uh, demons in hell that have to go on a heist into heaven to steal something of important. So that's, that's all I can oh. say about that. Um, let's see here. Hey, Ton Will. Who's on, your route mush, route, blah, blah, blah. who's on your Mount Rushmore of influential artists? Todd, you'll be on mine. So go ahead. Oh. That's four people, right? Mount Rushmore? Right, that, yep, that's four people, four presidents. Um, let's see. So my Mount Rushmore is super easy for me. Uh, I, I call them my foundational four influences. They were uh, the first four I mentioned at the top of this uh, live stream here. Uh, Arthur Adams would probably be my George Washington. Uh, <laughs> you don't need to get specific with which president, but you sure, go ahead. <laughs> uh, Rick Leonardi is my Abraham Lincoln. Um, then, uh, let's see, uh, Alan Davis would be my, uh, my Jefferson and then, uh, Walter Simonson would be my Teddy Roosevelt. Very nice. Well, for me, um, I would have to start off with Todd McFarlane. He's the reason why I got into comic book art as a kid. Um, so that he would definitely be on there. And then after that, it would have to be Greg Capullo because nice. he's the one that made me say, do you know what? This art is so good that I want to do this for a living and draw comics. Um, and then following that, I'd have, uh, I don't know, this guy, I, I think you heard him. His name's Todd Nock. Of, I don't know if you've ever heard of him or not, but um, he'd be on there for the cartoon influence and especially the traditional art influence. And then who would be, oh, I know who my last one would be. It would be John Romita Jr. So that would be, uh, that would be yeah, my. he's awesome. Well, I'm honored to be on your Mount Rushmore, Will. I'm completely honored, especially with uh, creators such as those. Yeah, a little lift, little lift up to you're in good, you're in good, uh, good uh, shoulder bumping there. Absolutely! Oh my gosh. Let's see here. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Someone said, "Finally, a good artist on the stream." That's some, that's some good shade. I like that. Oh. <laughs> This is, this is our, uh, our our troll that joins all the time, which is great. I like I like it though. It makes me I like stuff like that. It makes me wanna it makes me wanna get better. Yeah. So when did you first uh, start actually going back to doing uh, Marvel interiors? Uh, let's see. If you I were got, at DC let's... for a while. I was in DC just prior to getting Young Justice. I did two fill-in issues on Sensational Spider-Man uh, with writer Todd DeZago when Michael Ringo was taking a, a bit of a break or about to move on to a different title. Um, so I did two issues of that, but that was what put me over the top for Young Justice. And that's when DC locked me in because they were afraid I was going to get locked in over on Spider-Man. So they said, so that, that, that those two issues, fill-in issues of uh, Sensational Spider-Man locked me in at, at DC. So that kept me working at DC steady on Young Justice and Teen Titans Go!, through uh, the early 2000s. 2006 is when I started doing uh, working for Marvel regularly because uh, uh, I did Young Justice with a writer named Peter David, who is now working. And when we finished Young Justice, he moved back to Marvel, started doing the Friendly Neighborhood series with artist Michael Ringo again. And uh, so when Mike was leaving that book, Peter emailed me and said, hey, Todd, Mike's leaving the book. The editor asked me who I he wants as a... Uh, as an artist, like, did Peter have any suggestions of who he wanted to work with? He said, he goes, I told them, I want you. Are you interested in drawing any Spider-Man? And I'm like, uh, let me think about that. Yes, absolutely. Are you kidding? <laughs> yeah. It's Spider-Man. How do you say no to that? So, uh, so that's twice that I've, I've come into, uh, pinch hit for, uh, Michael Ringo on a Spider-Man series. And Michael Ringo is one of my favorite artists, definitely an influence on there. If I had a second Mount Rushmore, he would be on that second, um, um, second row of presidents and uh so sad that we lost him uh i guess I almost know. 10 years ago uh just was heartbreaking and, and shocking uh knowing how healthy he was to to hear that he had passed so uh definitely um an honor to follow in his footsteps twice 
And uh, so working on Friendly Neighborhood Spider-Man, they brought me in for a two-issue arc that they immediately bumped up to three issues. Then they asked me back for another three issues, which they immediately bumped to four, then bumped to five, then to six. Then they go, can you just finish this series out? Because we're about to do uh, one more day, brand new day, and we need someone to wrap up uh, Friendly Neighborhood. And from there, then Marvel just kept giving me project after project. I've been doing that pretty much ever since, except for a two-year stint I did with Robert Kirkman on his Invincible spinoff, oh, yes. Invincible Universe. Yes, that's right. Yes, yeah, so what was that like? That was a lot of fun. I'd been reading Invincible from issue one. Yeah, I really it's a fantastic enjoyed book. the Invincible series. Yeah, so it was. Uh, I was already a fan of uh, Kirkman's comics to begin with, or at least Invincible at the very least, uh, and Science Dog, things like that. So, uh, so when he messaged me on Twitter asking if I was available to really do some art. Yeah, yeah. He goes, I don't have your email. What's your email, man? I goes, I, I want to talk to you about uh, drawing a comic if you're available. So, uh, now, how big was so Kirkman felt, at this point? He was he was pretty big. Uh, I think um, the show was uh, had just, the first season had just debuted or something like that, I think. This was in 2000, the end of 2011. Yeah, so that's, yeah. The, that's the end of uh, season, well, season two, I guess. Since season two, okay, yeah. So, so the Walking Dead, you know, show was big. So he is he was really skyrocketing at this point. And I think he had the funds to start doing spinoff comics like Invincible Universe. So, uh, so he had that extra income to really play with his comic book properties and ideas of things he wanted to do. So that's when he asked if I was available. It's like, you know what? I don't have a project currently. I love the series, so I'd love to uh, play with that. Worked with uh, writer Phil Hester, who is also an incredible artist. Did some great stuff, uh, great art on um, Kevin Smith's Green Arrow series. Oh, right. Uh, that's, uh, that artist is Phil Hester, and he was a great, great person to work with. And um, had a great two-year run there with Robert. And then when I was done with that, I let Nick Lowe over at Marvel know I was done at, at uh, with, on my Kirkman book, and I was coming available. And then a month later, um, I got the uh, Nightcrawler series, and that, that got me working full-time at Marvel again. Yeah, well, see, Marvel. There was one thing I like about Marvel is they have a very nice track record of they have an understanding of if you if you're off somewhere doing something else, it's not like the doors shut on us forever, which is just really yeah. nice to know. Because I did a, a year and a half stint uh, with Tom McFarlane on a Spawn book, and I was so yeah. nervous that when that was done, that I was I wouldn't get a job back in the business because Marvel is really my only professional interior contact essentially right so yeah, I, yeah and i was so nervous and i was i remember I, was, I didn't have any project for like three weeks um but luckily i got the call in and i've been flowing ever since but no they just seem yeah. to be very understanding mm -hmm. and um no they're, they're a great company they're, they're yeah I've, i have no complaints <laughs> yeah I, i've had a lot of great support there as well so um uh, and at DC also, I've, the people I've worked with at DC have been been uh, great people and great friends as well. So just in the industry in general, I feel very, very fortunate to have gotten to work with so many amazing people, whether it be writers, artists, or uh, editors. Because I think we all have that mentality of we loved reading comics as a kid, and we want to make cool comics now. Yeah. No, definitely. Let's have a look here. My route mush, my mount. I can't. Why do I keep saying Round Mushmore? I have no idea. Round Mushmore. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a brand. Of, I think that's a brand of uh, of porridge or yeah, oatmeal. or dog food maybe. Um, <laughs> uh, my mount, my Mount Rushmore of Carters would probably be Charles Schultz, Bill Watterson, Allison Betchel, and Stan Sakay. Now I'm embarrassed because oh, yeah. I don't recognize any of those names. Uh, let's see. Well, Charles Schultz was the creator of Peanuts, right. Snoopy, oh, oh, and okay. such. Right. Yeah. Gotcha. Bill Watterson, uh, Calvin and Hobbes. Oh, okay. Uh, Stan, Sa Stan Sakai, Usagi Yojimbo. No, that rings. But the, uh, the one woman's name, I don't know her name. I'm not familiar with her work, or at least I, I can't place her name. Allison, B-E-C-H-D-E-L, unless I'm mispronouncing it. Yeah, I, I, I can't place her. I don't, I'm not sure who that is. Oh, I'll have to, I'm going to have to look at some stuff up after this. Yeah, me too. So uh, Stan Sakai is an amazing man. I've gotten to meet him. I met him when I was first trying to break in. Uh, when I was first trying to break into comics, I was more of a funny animal kind of guy. So I, I loved the Ninja Turtles. I loved Usagi Yojimbo. And he was coming to Dallas for a convention I was so excited to meet 
this legendary funny animal artist. Like, wow, Stan Sakai, Usagi Yojimbo, I'm so excited to meet him. Showed him my portfolio. Wait, hang on a second. Is Usagi Yojimbo, is that the, the rabbit, the samurai rabbit? Yes. Oh, gotcha. Samurai okay. rabbit, yes, yes. Usagi Yojimbo, I guess, translates to rabbit bodyguard. Gotcha. Um, yeah, and that comic's been running since like the late 80s. So wow. Stan is, uh, he's just the sweetest man. I showed him my portfolio, and this was before I got my first gig at Marvel, that that what the, that the Marvel editor gave me. Um, so I was still doing funny animal stuff. And uh, and Stan changed the course of my career. I was heading that funny animal direction, and he challenged me. And uh, he said, he looked at my portfolio, it was very gracious. And uh, when he was done, you know, he gave me his critique. He said, he goes, something to keep in mind. Funny animals is a very small niche in the world of comics. There are a lot fewer funny animal comics than there are traditional superhero comics. He goes, if you really want to work in comics, consider trying traditional superhero stuff because you're going to have a wider target to sh aim for. Um, it goes, unless you really love funny animal stuff, he goes, but just something I wanted to just to, for you to keep in mind. And you know, I thank him for the advice. And that night when I got home to my apartment, I was thinking, why am I not trying to do traditional superhero stuff? Mm -hmm. Why have I always been funny animal stuff since high school and uh, here now into the first year of, of art school? And it's like, I know exactly why. This was my soul searching moment. And sometimes we as artists really have to do this and look, take that hard look at ourselves as to why are we doing what we're doing? And I realized I am want to do funny animal stuff because I find drawing human faces hard to do i don't know how to draw a human nose to make it fit on the face correctly i can't draw the eyes right jaws and cheekbones they're too difficult so i'm just avoiding my weak areas and just drawing a a, a a rabbit or a turtle or a lion or a dog's head on a on a superhero body then i don't have to worry about all those things i can't do or i feel i can't do as as when in drawing humans so that's why i'm just avoiding my weakness so i it's like okay if I really want to level up, mm -hmm. I'm going to have to face my fear, grabbed my sketchbook and drew my first traditional superhero character. I, I made up my own character. He ended up in my wild guard comics and he was super cartoony, but that was the first step on a new road to get me to where I wanted to be. And I left funny animal comics behind and completely lost interest in doing funny animal comics. You know, it's so funny. <laughs> I'm going a bit through that myself currently. With this, uh -huh. with having this break with the quarantine, um, it's it's given me a chance to finally start studying again. Because when you when you work in the comic industry, it's go go go. You have no time for yeah. anything else. At least I don't. Um, right. And um, it's been a real totally. treat to uh, one thing that I've always been terrible at is uh, sh uh, shading with solid blacks. And I've been mm. taking my time to do it recently, and it's finally all clicking. And uh, yeah, so I. It's one. Of, that's why if people, a lot of people say like, "Oh, I love your art style." It's like you don't use any solid blacks. It's really clean. That's like a really cool choice. And I'm like, "Yeah, that's not a choice." <laughs> that's because <laughs> I don't know what what I'm doing. So yeah. it's been really nice to um, finally be able to sort of get a grasp on that and understand. Totally, yeah. I see we have uh, Diego, and I don't want to butcher your, your last name, uh, Ola Tegui, and I'm so sorry for that because I guarantee that's not the right <laughs> mispronunciation. It's another Marvel comic book artist, so thank you for joining the chat. Uh, I'm a huge fan of your work. Uh, I really love it, so thank you for hopping in. And uh, I'd love to have you on the stream sometime, definitely. I think that'd be uh, fun to get more artists uh, drawing and turn this into a little little fun thing to do. Are you familiar with Diego's work? Uh, unfortunately, I am not, but I'd love to check it out. I Well, I highly recommend it. It's, very, it's just what, what we both gravitate towards. It's cartoony uh, with that realistic edge. So, awesome! Yeah, definitely. I'll I'll be looking up his uh, work here after the stream. Yeah, everyone, go look up Diego. I believe that he worked on the slapstick. Uh, oh yeah. Series was that the one with with Riley Brown? I, I'm not I'm not 100 percent sure. Okay. Let's see here. Do either of you know Ed McGuinness? He's one of my favorite artists. <laughs> Uh, I don't, but I have been compared to him many times in my career, which is, you know, an absolute, what an amazing comparison to get. Yes, I do know Ed, and uh, he's been a friend for uh, many, many years. Uh, definitely, uh, one, I, I'm a huge fan of his work, and he's a great guy as well. Definitely been honored to be able to count him as one of my friends. So, uh, yeah, yeah, love Ed. Let's see here. Um, 
Is there one character in DC or Marvel you'd love to redesign? Oh, redesign. Interesting. Huh. Wow. That, that, that's a thinker for me. Do you have anyone, Will? Uh, I'd like to give uh, a crack at redesigning Nightwing, I think. That character means a lot to me, ah. and uh, I feel like he's due another iconic look. Yeah. Um, let's see. For me, uh, it would be fun to kind of do a, a take on X-Men uniforms, like put together a yeah. team and come up with a team uniform for them because I love the X-Men. Uh, rec- or I guess last year I did uh, an updated version of Power Pack. Like they're you know aged up, and this was before I knew that they were going. Marvel was going to do a new present day Power Pack miniseries, mm-hmm. and I think uh, and I didn't even realize that I just found out when I was working on those that you were drawing Alex and Julie Power in Future Foundation. I was, and I also redesigned their costume as adults as well. Yeah. So, so I came up with a, a look for them that kind of harkens back to their original look, but then kind of updating it for kids who are like teenagers to young adults now, because right. I think Alex would be a, as old as maybe 21 at the oldest, if we assume that eight years has passed from the 1980s to present day. Well, I worked very closely with uh, the writer on them, but my biggest influence for my costumes was it was a big space adventure, and I'm a massive Akira Toriyama fan, a massive mm. fan of Dragon Ball Z. And that's, that would, he's probably on my mouth. You know, if, if I could chuck an extra head on there, it would definitely be him. Um, so that was that yeah. was my influence with that. That's so funny. I did, so that means that we pretty much designed costumes for the same characters at the same time. Yes, but at least yours was for publication. Mine was uh, purely fandom. Right. I, well, I, I I just wrapped up my. I just need to put my signature. Yeah, and I'm I'm finishing up mine here right now as well. I can't chat while doing the signature. I don't know why. It's the only thing that I can't talk through. Um, so I'm just going to do some uh, last minute uh, fan questions and then we will wrap this up. Let's see. All right. If there's any writer you could work with, who would it be? Uh, for me, uh, I've gotten to work with so many great writers that I grew up being fans of Peter David, Chris, Chris Claremont, Louise Simonson. But one writer that I've gotten to work with a couple of times, and he and I have been best pals for like almost 20 years now, and I'd love to work with him now that he's back to writing comics. You just worked with him recently on Spider-Ham, my dear friend Zeb Wells. Oh, uh, I'd, love to, I can, I'd love to work with him more. I can tell you right now, uh, he's my favorite writer I've ever worked with in my life. Uh, uh, really, really good at communicating uh, about, mm-hmm. uh, hey, I want to do this big splash. Is that cool? Or I want to yeah. do this, this, and this. Is it possible? And really good... That sort of taking ideas of stuff you've drawn and then start incorporating it into the writing as well. Yeah. Yeah, he's yeah. a great guy. And he has a great sense of humor. His humor yes. is just tight and fun and funny. And, you know, he, he just is just a real thrill to work with. And uh, he and I are hoping to do another book again someday because we've only done short stories together. We did the Spider-Man Obama team up. And oh, then... he wrote that, really? He wrote that. I drew that. That was our first time to work together after having been friends for like almost 10 years at that time. We never worked together, and then we got paired up by accident, or un- un- unbeknownst to the editor, and then um, and then it took another ten years for us to work together, and that was a ten-page uh, Spider-Man J Jonah team-up uh, story for Am- Amazing Spider-Man uh, twenty-five that came out last summer. It was our second time to work together, so we're really hoping that we can get to work together again before another ten years passes. All right. Yeah, well, uh, well, get in line, because I want to work with him again as well. <laughs> fair um, enough, fair enough. Uh, what art school did you go to? I went to the Art Institute of Dallas. Um, and unfortunately, the entire Art Institute uh, series of schools, chain of schools, shut down last year. Oh, no. So they are no longer in existence. So, uh, yeah, no one can go to the school that I had gone to. Wow. Now, well, you know, same with me. I went to uh, Burlington College in uh, Vermont, for only two years, and uh, that's uh-huh. sh- that school shut down as well. So oh, wow. I feel your pain of not being able to sort of stroll back on the campus, essentially. Yeah. Oh, I yeah. didn't. I didn't answer um, a writer who I'd like to work with. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. I well, uh, uh, I'm gonna be bold and say Frank Miller because he's the best. And, and my God, I don't know what the <laughs> hell he'd give me, but it, I, I would look forward to it. Um, yeah. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Will either of you be doing any creator material like Todd's Wild God series? I, I would, I, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to. I, I, I'm in the middle of pitches and sending stuff out. 
and um, I, it's something I really want to do. It's uh, I want to be a writer artist. That's my number one goal. So awesome. Yeah, I hope to do more with Wildguard and probably try to get more of my Jack o Lantern comic strips going. On, yeah, you could uh, easily his collect. Account. I bet I guarantee you could collect them and you know send them to Eric at, at Image or something and get those printed. Definitely. Yeah. Now uh, let's see here. Uh, once this all ends, Todd, you should definitely come to Nashville Comic Con next year. This year was supposed to be their first year. I'd love to come to Nashville. I've never been to Tennessee. I would love to come to the Nashville con. I've heard amazing things about the city of Nashville. I'd love to come out and, uh, and check that, that, that city out and meet everyone there. Right. Well, I'm going to put you completely on the spot here, Todd, uh, uh -oh. on every, every one of my streams, I give away a free digital download code to a comic that I've drawn. And today I have uh, spider ham issue number one. Cause I figured there'd be a few new people watching and they would like to get a chance to grab a free digital version of this comic. So we're going to play a game on the stream and what's going to happen is Todd is going to have to come up with a question off the top of his head that has to do with something that we've talked about uh, during this stream and whoever guesses it first and spelling is correct. I mean, spe spelling is correct. Spelling is important. will win the free digital download code to Spider Ham issue one written by Zeb Wells and drawn by me. So go ahead. Okay. Well, now, yeah, I got. I got to remember all the stuff we talked about here uh, this e uh, this uh, well evening for you, morning for me. Uh, gosh, and 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 base a question off of that. Um, uh, okay. How about this? How about uh, would maybe name one character I would have put on my version of Fantastic Four, the Todd Knock Fantastic Four. That's a great one. Anyone so... who can name one of the characters from that that th those four that I I had mentioned. Whoever names uh, one of the characters Todd chose for his uh, original Fantastic Four team, whoever names it first will win the digital download code for this comic. And the stream's a bit delayed, so we just have to sit and wait. Okay. <laughs> you, I forgot. Usually I ask this question as I'm wrapping up uh, the art, but uh, I'm a dingus. So. Oh, someone <laughs> said Spider-Man immediately. So Nathan Hayashi, congratulations. You want a free... A uh, copy of this book. If you'd like to get the digital download code, please email me at robsonrequest at gmail.com. That's robsonrequest at gmail.com. And I will send you the digital download code for that. Um, and please, Todd, plug away whatever you're doing, whatever you want to talk about, your socials and everything in between. Yeah, let's see. Yeah, you can find me on most all the big social media, Twitter, Instagram. I'm at Todd Knock. On Facebook, I'm Art of Todd Knock. I have my own YouTube channel, uh, so that you can find me as Todd Knock here on YouTube. And um, let's see, uh, I've been working on some stay-at-home uh, convention commission-style pieces. Uh, I'm hoping to wrap up my first wave, and maybe if there's time, open up a second wave. So stay tuned to my social media and my um, website, ToddKnock.com, because that's where I take the commission requests when I open up those types of lists. So you'll want to you can go there now and see what wave one looked like, what the initial promo looked like. And when the first list opened up, uh, that list is now uh, uh, currently closed, as it says on that post. But you can get the idea of the options and prices that would be available. And um, as far as comic book projects, uh, I'm currently doing the Gwen St or the, the Gwen Stacy series is kind of trying to come out. The first two issues came out before uh, the comic industry got paused. So it's a five-issue miniseries. So as soon as they can re-release or release those next three issues, uh, do check out my work on Gwen Stacy. And uh, and if you you like Young Justice, it's all being collected in trade paperback. The fans have clamored for almost 20 years. We want Young Justice <laughs> in trade. The first four volumes are out. Volume five is supposed to come out this summer, which collects the rest of the series. You'll get the entire 55-issue series plus Sins of Youth and the 80-page Giant specials it's all collected in these five volumes so young justice fans your day has come your cries have been heard dc <laughs> has now collected the entire series in trade paperback and i am so thrilled to have a book that i loved so much that they had to cancel it to get me off of the book because <laughs> i i drew the entire series loved working on that book loved working with those kids so if you enjoyed the original uh young justice run that peter david and i did you can now have it beautifully displayed on your bookshelf in five volumes volumes one through four currently out now five, volume five hopefully will be out this summer depending on how things go with the whole covid messing with the the printing situation but book five is on the way 
Well, there you go. So thank you very much uh, for joining. Oh, yeah. Also, my commissions are open as well, everybody. RobsonRequest at gmail.com. And that's what I'm doing in all these streams. I'm doing commissions and sketches and other fun stuff. Along with my brother, uh, who, where we run the Spider-Man, the animated series podcast, which is a podcast all about the classic 90s Spider-Man cartoon, where we interview uh, writers and uh, voice actors of the show and other shenanigans in between. So please check that out. All right. Well, thank you very much for joining, Todd. Um, and uh, yeah, I will uh, I will see you on. <laughs> yeah, thank, thank you so much. Thank you so much for inviting me. It's so good to get a chance to chat with you and hang out and draw with you. And uh, hopefully someday I can get it set up to where I can have some guests on my, my channel. I'd love to have you a guest on my channel sometime. Absolutely. All right. Thank you very much, everybody. Awesome, Goodbye.